couple of months ago, we drove the new Volkswagen GTI. And in that film, we talked about that car, the Golf R. Um, well, in the past couple of months, I found out something very important. We should not be excited about that car because it has 292 horsepower. We should not be excited about that car because it has 280 pound-feet of torque. And we should not be excited about that car because it is all-wheel drive. We should be excited about that car because it was tuned by the man that has the most seat time in a Porsche 962 in the world. If that weren't enough, he also is the man that led the first Audi Quattros to victory and tested them. So with that, we should be excited about that car because it was tuned by the one and only Hans Stuck. Okay, so that's all fine and good. You got one of the preeminent race car drivers tuning a car, but what does it really translate to here out on the road? Well, in reality, this is very different than any other Golf. You've driven very different than a GTI. It's still refined, but there's a bite to this thing that I've, I haven't experienced in other Golfs. Uh, for example, the transmission, total refinement that you would get from the Volkswagen Group, even in the DSG, which I did spend a little bit of time in today, and it pains me to admit this, but the DSG is beautifully matched to this engine. It's just, I personally gotta have a manual, gotta have three pedals. Going around corners, the, the stability that they've put into the driving dynamics of this vehicle, there, there's virtually no pitch, squat, dive, or roll. I mean, let's put this into perspective. This thing is a hatchback. This is the car your grandmother, your nan, or your oma would take to like your local grocery store to get her shopping for the week, at least in the base version of it. But if someone weren't telling you that a race car driver tuned this thing, you would say some engineer that knows how to drive made this thing dance. Not since the General Motors 3800 V6 family of engines has a code name of an engine been beaten into our heads as with the Volkswagen Group corporate EA888 two-liter direct-injected turbocharged gas engine. Every time I say it, I kind of run out of breath. But how do you go from 220 horsepower, at least in the Golf GTI with a performance package and 258 pound-feet of torque to 292 and 280 respectively? Well, there's a couple of things that go into it. Pay attention. Um, number one, the cylinder head. You take that out, throw it away, find another one that has bigger valve openings. Number two, the exhaust. Take that out, find a two-stage exhaust. Number three, and this is the most important, the turbocharger. You pull it off, throw it away, find a bigger one, actually less boost, but it still forces more air into the engine. Then, once you've done all that, now you got to deal with higher compression ratio and more air, so you need basically uh, bits that are stronger. So you need pistons that are stronger and you need high pressure injectors. So you put that all together and you get 292 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. So that's a lot of changes, but does it add up to more than the sum of its parts? And I gotta say wholeheartedly, absolutely yes. And let's say for the sake of discussion, you were to put me in this car and not tell me what's underneath the hood, I would be hard pressed to tell you that that is a turbo four. It power delivery is so linear. Like there isn't like an explosion. Like if you guys have driven the CLA 45, man, that thing, it's fun to drive, but it's an explosive car, kind of like a, like a tuned Subaru almost. For this, the power comes in at a very low point on the, on the torque curve and just stays flat almost, I think, up to like 4,000 RPM. So whether you're doing canyons like us here today or even going on the freeway, you can wind this thing out and really don't feel flat-footed, especially when you consider it's a four-cylinder for a four-door car. Oh, and an important point about this, the only body style that's on offer in the US is the four-door. So like in the GTI, you guys can get a two-door or a four-door. Here, only four-door in the Golf R. I don't know how I feel about that. A couple of years back, you and I drove the Golf GTD, which effectively is a GTI with a diesel engine. It was only on offer in Europe, 
and it was fitted with an adjustable suspension which was also only on offer in Europe. That is now changing with the Golf R. Now full disclosure, the car we're driving today is a Euro spec car. It is fitted with a manual transmission as God intended, but that is changing for the 2016 model year. Uh, basically this transmission is making the trip across the pond, so is the adjustable suspension. But the suspension, while it will be available on both the manual and DSG, it's kind of like an adjustable suspension on steroids. It adjusts many different things. So basically you get into the menu here and there are five different settings. Comfort, normal, race, which is the one you and I want, eco, and individual. Individual is the important thing here because you can adjust more than the suspension. And really the suspension, it's very similar in concept to the, uh, the GM magnetic ride control, also very similar to the dynamic ride that you can get on the uh, Audi S3 with the performance package. Um, and basically you can adjust the steering, the engine mapping, all that kind of stuff. But there's also adjustments for the lighting and even the air conditioning for eco mode. So what does this DCC thing mean in practice out here on the road? Well, I've been playing around with it all day and even in comfort mode, which we're in now, the car is very refined. But, you know, you and I are not going to play in comfort mode. Let's go to the race mode. And all of a sudden, everything sharpens up because you got what steering, throttle mapping, even the lights. Um, but notice, let's, let's downshift here when we go around this corner. Listen to how it sounds. It's got much more of a growl to it in race mode. I will say with that sound, it kind of forces you to downshift because you want to hear the noise. I'll be honest with you guys, I do not know if that's coming through here in a speaker or if it's just that's the engine tune we're hearing through the insulation. I really, really hope it's the engine tune through the insulation. I got to tell you, this thing, I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, it is so easy to drive fast and I'm really impressed with all the MQB vehicles, how they've done a great job in eliminating most torque steer. Like for example, we're in third gear, we're gonna go around a turn here and even pushing it almost to the red line, you really don't feel much torque steer at all. Now, I can't sit here and honestly tell you that I'm feeling most of the power going to the rear wheels like you would in say like an Audi Quattro. Um, like an S7, remember that S7 we drove? That thing was pretty awesome. Um, that's 67% of the power going to the rear wheels. This, it's clear that most of the power is going to the front wheels and the hall deck system, and this is the latest generation of the hall deck system, it's sending the power when it feels slip or it needs more grip in the back or if you're just putting your foot to the floor and you're trying to get more power to all the wheels. Now here's the part of our show where we have a little bit of a surprise for you. In a couple of days, we're gonna premiere our Audi S3 episode. We did this by design because if you remember back in July, Nick Juhas told us that the Golf and the Audi A3 are built off the same platform. Well, the Golf R and the Audi S3 go a couple of steps further in that they share the same all-wheel drive system and the engine down to the specs. But after driving the two, I can tell you they are tuned very differently. Now my question to you is this, comparably equipped, they're about $5,000 difference in price. So I know what I would buy, I would have to get the Golf R because it's the only one that's offered with a manual transmission. We want to know from you guys, A, would you want the Golf R or the S3, and B, is $5,000 enough difference between an Audi and a Volkswagen? Let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV, all one word, Motoman TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. So here's the script. Click here to subscribe. Click here to watch one of our 350 other episodes. And most importantly, share us with your friends. You're already wasting half your life on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Motoman TV, all one word. I don't care who you share us with. Share us with your enemies. Just give the gift of Motoman.